Hi, I'm Ingrid Whitaker. Welcome to week five of Ethan and Ingrid's 48 state big year. This week, we finally left the cold confines of the North and journeyed south to the Sunshine State, Florida. On the way, we had a few adventures, saw some rare birds, and have had the time of our life. On Sunday morning, we loaded up our Subaru Outback, left our Maine Coon cats and our home in the hands of our trusted house sitter, Amy, and headed to Newton, Massachusetts for a birthday party for my dad. At 4.30, we made our apologies to the family and jumped on the Mass Turnpike with the intention of reaching New York State before bed. Unfortunately, the weather forgot to check with a weather report and we watched the dashboard thermometer drop below 32 degrees. As it did, the expected rain turned into unexpected snow and rapid accumulation. Within 20 minutes, we realized we would be in trouble if we kept driving. So we found a hotel in Sturbridge, two hours short of our planned first night Good destination. Good start. Good start. <laughs> when morning arrived, the snow plows had cleared and treated the roads, and we were off to destination one, a pink-footed goose in New Jersey. A pink-footed goose is a winter resident of Europe. It spends its summer nesting in Greenland and Iceland. Every so often, one of these geese flies west instead of east in autumn and excites birders in the U.S. Our quarry had been hanging with a large flock of Canada geese in a community park in Lincroft, New Jersey. Unfortunately, the pink-footed goose is brown, gray, and black, like Canada geese. The two species are about the same size, they eat the same stuff and act just the same. So to find a single bird in a flock of 300 birds is a little bit like playing Where's Waldo? It didn't help that another birder scanning the birds kept saying, I was here 20 minutes ago and it's not here. But it was, and after about five minutes of scoping, Ethan found it and got me and Doubting Thomas on it. Then we were back in the car, hoping to get another rarity for the day, a barnacle goose in Smyrna, Delaware, another two hours away. This wayward bird from Greenland and Iceland, the barnacle goose, is white and black and easy to separate from the Canada geese, except it took us quite a while to find the flock. Our big year endeavor would be so much easier if birds would just stay in one place. Birds are coded by scarcity, with very common birds being code one and extinct birds designated code six. The pink-footed and barnacle geese are both designated code four. Thus, we were delighted to get two rare birds on day one of our road trip. We spent the night in Ocean City, Maryland and picked up another five birds for the year before dark. Tuesday was a long haul drive to the town of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, near Kitty Hawk, where the Wright brothers made their first flights. There we spent two nights, spending the day seeing the birds that make the mid-Atlantic home each winter. We saw hundreds of enormous tundra swans, thousands of beautiful redhead ducks, and lots of first-of-the-year wading birds. These barrier islands made a productive stop for us, 25 new birds for the year. Next, we went to Georgetown, South Carolina, where it took us two days to find the rare red cockaded woodpecker. After this triumph of historic proportions, we pointed our once shiny black car made brownish gray by South Carolina clay toward Florida and flamingos. Before Ethan and I became serious birders, we assumed the flamingos were relatively common birds in Florida. On the contrary, they are quite rare in Florida and the rest of the country. That all changed last year when Hurricane Idalia swept flocks of American flamingos up from the Bahamas and deposited them all over the United States with verified reports in Wisconsin, Michigan, Kansas, Texas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Ohio, North Carolina, Virginia, South Carolina, Alabama, and of course, Florida. 
The wayward birds immediately started south, and by January of our big year, only two small flocks remain in the USA, one near Cape Canaveral and the other near Fort Myers, both in Florida. At about 4 p.m., we finally rolled onto Merritt Island. We stood right where dozens of other birders had seen the birds over the last week, staring at the same nearby island where dozens of other birders had seen the birds and saw nothing. The sun was setting right behind the island and we could see nothing but bright, iris-frying, skin-burning sun. Our quest for the American flamingos would have to wait till morning. When morning came, the sun was at our back and there were the American flamingos right where they were supposed to be, about a quarter mile across the bay. We were amazed at their size, up to six feet tall. They dwarf every other bird around them and their feathers are a vibrant pink that no plastic lawn ornament could ever imitate. Another slice of life or pie for both of us. Thus began one of the more wonderful days of birding Ethan and I have ever experienced, starting with a painted bunting at the Merritt Island Visitor Center, followed by six miles of incredible Florida birds, right where they were supposed to be when we planned this trip out over the last few years, simply exhilarating. Here are a few of the birds that we saw today, followed by one very special one that not only capped off our day delightfully, but brought us another milestone. Our final bird of the day was the Florida scrub jay, completing our grand slam of scrub jays, California, Woodhouse, Island, and now Florida, which began over seven years ago. Now, of course, we are trying to see them all again in 2024. We have another 10 days in Florida, and we know that every day won't be as great as today, but today was a nice counterbalance to the challenges of this week. You can follow our 2024 Big Year at BigYearBirding.com. Happy birding and may there be some life or pie in your future.